You want to install different Python versions on a Debian or Ubuntu Linux because you work on different projects that require different Python versions and dependencies? Or you just want to check out the latest release candidate of the next Python version? In this video I'm going to show you how to install and use different Python versions using PyEnv together with virtual environments and how to use those with Visual Studio Code. Welcome, I'm Kons. I got a master's degree in computer science and currently I work as a graduate research assistant where I use Python on a daily basis. And that makes PyEnv to one of my most important tools. Installing and using different Python versions under Ubuntu or Debian Linux is actually pretty easy using PyEnv. Pine has a command line tool which allows you to seamlessly switch between different Python versions and also enables you to set specific Python versions for dedicated folders. Together with virtual environments, Pineff is an incredibly useful tool for everyone who uses Python on a regular basis. So without further ado, let's jump right into Linux to set everything up. Before we can start using Pineff, we have to install a bunch of packages using apt. And you can find a list of all the packages you have to install through apt on my website, for which you can find the link down below in the description. So we're going to copy all the packages over here and enter them in our terminal and press on enter and wait until they have been installed. Now that we have installed all the packages necessary for Pineff, we can install Pineff, which is super easy. We're just going to clone the Pineff GitHub repository into our home directory. We copy that, paste, and press on enter, and that will clone the Pineff GitHub repository into the .pineff directory in our home directory. Before we can start using Pineff, we have to add three things to our bash RC. The first one is the environment variable pineff root, which points to the .pineff directory we just created with our git clone. Then we're going to extend the path variable such that the pineff command is actually usable when we open a terminal. And then we're going to add the pineff init command, which will activate pineff every time we open a new terminal. So we're just going to copy those three commands over here, copy, paste and enter them. And now we can close this terminal and open up a new one. And when we now enter pineff, we can see pineff is working. And this concludes the installation of pineff. And now we're going to use it. And the first thing we are going to do is to check out which Python versions we can actually install using pineff. And for this, we're going to enter the command pineff install minus L, which will list all the Python versions which are available through pineff. And there's a lot of those versions. There's stackless, there's PyPy, there's Anaconda, Miniconda. But for this video, we're going to stick to the normal C Python implementation. And I would like to install the latest stable version of the Python version 3.9, which is 3.9.7. So we're going to copy the string over here and then we enter pyenv install and paste the version number and press enter. And this will install the Python version 3.9.7 through pyenv. Now that we have installed our first Python version through pyenv, we can check which Python versions are available through pyenv on our system. And for that, I'm going to enter pyenv versions. And we can see currently the system version, which comes with the operating system is installed and the version 3.9.7 is available. And the currently active version is marked by this asterisk in the front. I would like to use the version 3.9.7 for my whole system. So I'm going to enter the command pyenv global 3.9.7. And this will make this Python version globally the default for every Python command I'm going to issue. We can check that by entering Python capital V, which shows that we are actually using Python version 3.9.7. And I even prepared a little Python test program. It's a quick hello world, which prints out the current Python version. And when we run that Python hello pi, we can see it says, hello, I'm Python version 3.9.7. But now I would like to check out the latest release candidate of Python with one of my Python projects. And for that, I'm going to install the latest release candidate. Let's first look it up. pyenv install minus L. And when we scroll up, we can find that the latest release candidate for the Python version 3.10 is 3.10.0 RC2. We're going to copy that, copy, and then enter once again, pyenv install and then we paste the version and press on enter. 
Now with this Python release kinetic installed, we're going to issue the pyenv versions command once again, which shows us that the version is now available. And if we enter pyenv local 3.10.0.rc2, we're going to set the Python release candidate version for our local directory here. This created the .pyenv minus version file. And when we have a look at that, it actually contains the version string. And if we run Python minus V, we can see it actually uses Python 3.10.rc2. And when we run our Python script, our hello world script, we see it actually runs with Python version 3.10.02. When you work on a Python project, you usually import several modules, but you don't want to install those modules system-wide because different projects might depend on different versions of those modules. And virtual environments help you out here. Virtual environments will create a dedicated directory in your project folder, which will store all the modules you want to use for that project. And to create a virtual environment, we first have to enter python mvenf.venf and this will create the virtual environment in our python test directory. When we have a look, we can see it actually created the .venf directory. And when we look at venf bin, we can see it actually has the python version here. It has its pip version here. And to activate this virtual environment, we have to enter source venf bin activate and this will activate the virtual environment and we can see that it is actually activated because it added this dot venf in front of our prompt and now you can use pip to install your python modules and the python modules will be stored within the dot venf directory and as a last step i'm going to show you how to use virtual environments within visual studio code we're going to start Visual Studio Code from the command line. We enter code dot, and this will open Visual Studio Code in the directory we are currently in, which is the Python test. And we can see we have the hello.py, which contains our hello world script, which prints out the version number. Before we can run our Python script, we are going to add a settings JSON to this project, which will tell VS Code to always launch the virtual environment. For that, we're going to enter Control Shift P to open the command palette. Then we enter Settings JSON, and we're going to open the Workspace Settings JSON. This will open a empty JSON file, but in here we're going to enter Python Terminal Activate Environment, and this will be set to true. And if we save it and close it and now go to run start without debugging a new terminal will pop up at the bottom of our visual studio code and we can see it automatically activated our virtual environment and it is running with the python version 3.10.rc2 and this concludes this video on pyenv virtual environments and visual studio code We've seen how to install different Python versions, how to set a global Python version through Pyenv, how to set a local version through Pyenv, and how to use virtual environments together with Pyenv in Visual Studio Code. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if it was helpful for you. Remember that you can find all the commands used in this video together with a complete documentation on how to set up Pyenv virtual environments together with Visual Studio Code on my website, for which you can find the link down below in the description. Give this video a like, and if you want to catch up with me, join our lovely Discord community. Last but not least, big shout out to my Patreon subscribers for their support. I wish you a fantastic day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!